Now, this is PJ Savage, and you're watching the Three Count Podcast. The Three Count Podcast just got savage. Now, entering the ring, married to the business, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. I'm going to burn you down like one, two, three. Coming with a clothesline, then a big knee. I need the belt at the top of the pool. Well, now, by now, you know what this is. If you hear this kind of intro, you're already like, oh, man, this is way different from, you know, Now Entering the Ring. Because it is. Because this is Now Entering 201, and I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that leads you out that mountain called wrestling. Yes, and by now, you already know we're here for a second round. We're bringing people back. So who do we have back? You see that man right there? The man, the myth, the legend, the guy you can find all over New Jersey, especially when he's at IWA, as well as Invictus, soon to be taking on a close friend of mine. But more importantly, we're going to have to talk with the great, the powerful, PJ Savage. Hey, what's up, brother? Thank you for having me again, bro. Three count. You already know what it is, man. It's a pleasure being on the platform. Always a pleasure to chop it up with a fellow brother. Let's have some fun, baby. Hell yeah, man. So like, hey, so I, I love the fact that we get to come up here and just like talk shop and have some fun. And uh, what's what's crazy about it is like it. So it's been a wild ass year, like this last year. Right. And so just even for the show. Right. So this show like has had shit, a uh, hundred and ten episodes just from now in the ring. Right. So it was like a lot of people that we've had on the show. But your interview with you, I felt like was like like. I try to have them with all everybody, right? They're like genuine, but there's just obviously there's certain people that you just have like a natural connection with. And that was like one of yours. It's all like, I love going back and grabbing people who I've had conversations with and talk to them about, hey man, like, you know, I still want to nitpick and like find some extra stuff that maybe I kind of missed in the first time that we talked oh, yeah. and try to get it back in the second round. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, we, we, we've been wrestling for so long. I think I'm been, I've been on the scene for like seven years now. So it's like, well, I've been on the indies for two years. I was trained. I've been training for seven. Um, so like, there's <laughs> you can't cover everything in forty minutes. You know what I'm saying? No oh, facts, and that's why you have friendships behind the scenes. I think one of the most important things that I'm starting to learn, and it's something that I, I think I utilize pretty well, is networking. And I feel like a lot of people kind of forget that sometimes it's not necessarily like how good you are, but like how like. The connections that you genuinely have with people that will look out for you. Yeah, man. I mean, it sucks, but it's it's also just the business. Like that's what the business was in 1955. That was what the business was in 1965, and it's what the business will be in 2025. Like that's just the business. I mean, on the indie scene, it kind of sucks. Like I know I'm pigeonholed from a lot of places because a lot of places put their friends on. A lot of people put their locals on. A lot of people want to put certain guys. They're like. Well, you know what? I don't know what this guy does. I don't know what he brings to the table. So, like, a guy like me, if I want to branch out to a Baltimore, if I want to branch out to a Texas, I have to get my name to blow up. You know, like, right now I'm, I'm kind of, no pun intended, but I'm taking over the New York scene and New Jersey team. So, it's like I have to get to a point. I feel like I'm playing one of them old school wrestling games. There was one. I forgot the name of it. Like Bret Hart was in there. I played the crap out of it. I think it was Legends of Wrestling. And, like, okay, you okay. start out – and like the New York territory, go to the Florida territory, and then you get the Northeast. And then I feel like I'm doing that. Like, I feel like that's legit what I'm doing. I feel like I'm playing a video game and I'm going through career <laughs> mode and I gotta go through one section to the other. But again, there's a lot of friendships. There's a lot of like shaking someone's hand goes a long way. I can tell you this right off rip. I'm not gonna name names, of course. I was at uh, one of the last, the, the last Invictus show. And uh, one hell of a show. The locker room was a little weird. You know, like you get a lot. Invictus has a lot of up and coming talent. Yeah. So there's a lot of us that know we're rubbing shoulders with each other. But this is that cream at the top. There's a couple of us that like, we all talk with each other. We all know we're the top. We all know like, all right, we run this. This is how it. And the moment you get one of them kids that come in and they think they have all the talent in the world and they don't even say hi to nobody. They don't shake no one's hand. They don't converse with the promoter. Like, what's going on? Like, I just, like this is stuff that, you know, I, I got trained by Johnny Rod. So, like, this is stuff that was drilled into me. But, damn, like, that's just regular life etiquette, man. I just, 
a handshake is networking. I promise you. It's weird because like people like tend to have like these opinions. Like it's because like you, if you don't have like a lot of life experience and then you're just kind of doing things to kind of like fly by to see your pants. If if no one's there to like teach you or to tell you like, hey man, like these yeah. are the things that you should be looking out for, then you're kind of tending not to like follow those rules. And I feel like not only was I like like from the military side with my dad, but military side with myself, as well as like being told by other trainers and other people that, hey, oh, like this is what you do when you go here. And you just kind of like find those protocols and you just kind of follow through with them, right? And it's yeah. it's weird, as, and I, I agree, like sometimes like I may not be able to see everybody, like especially, okay, so if I'm in like Delaware, right, at 1CW, they, there's a lot of people in those locker rooms, right? And I try my best to go around and say hi to as many people as I can. Sometimes yeah. I'm not hitting everybody because sometimes there's just like 50 wrestlers like in the it's back. Tough. You're just like, yo, it's I tough. just, I'm, I'm trying, but it's like, you know, there's going to be those ones that I want to hit the most and be like, hey, yo, what's up? You know, and talk to everybody. But yeah, but you see like a 1CW, that's kind of like a home promotion for you. Kind of like yeah. what Invictus is for me. And like, like if I was to go to 1CW, I would make it like, a factor in my head to make sure I shake everyone's hand, even if it's somebody's girlfriend. I don't know. You don't know that person could be a, wo a worker. It could be somebody's boyfriend. It could be a worker. You never know. So I'm going to shake everyone's hand. At Invictus, I'm on the show three, four times. I'm coming out at the beginning. I'm cutting a promo. I'm going to do intermission, and I got a big spot at the end of the show. It's sometimes it might be tough. Like I'll say hi to all the regulars. The new people will be there. I'll try to get to as many as I can. But then all of a sudden, I'm pulled in this direction. I'm pulled in that direction. I'm pulled in this direction. Like, that happened to me at this Invicta show. I walked in the locker room one minute, knew everybody there. The next minute, I had a meeting with uh, some of the owners, went and took some promo pictures, came back. And I was like, damn, there were so many people here <laughs> that I didn't say hi to. Like, I felt like one of those guys. So I made it an effort to make sure I went and shook everybody's hand. And then I went to go get changed. But it's like little stuff like that. And, and it's like you said, like, unless you're told that, I, I always tell my wife it's common sense. And that's why it's frustrating to a lot of people because it's common sense. You walk, you go somewhere that you've never been before, or even if you've been there, just say what up to everybody. Show the respect to all the workers and all the boys. It's going to go a long way. I remember, so I work with Intense Wrestling Alliance, IWA, Nutley, New Jersey. Nice little hot promotion. It's getting hot. It's doing its thing. People are talking about it. It's all cool. It's all great. And I got a little, you know, creative. I got to have fun with the YouTube show. You know, like the owner came to me and was like, you're a guy with ideas. Here's a YouTube show. Show me what you got. <laughs> Do something with it. So I'm like, yo, this is great. I could get guys from all over the place. I could cut out the politic and cut out the bullshit. I could bring down a red dog, have them have three, four matches. And the one thing I, I hate, just because I had a personal experience, just me going to new territories, I always get jobbed out. You know, it's your first time over there. It happens. But I don't do that to people. Like, if you was to come, I'm going to put you over two, three times, and then maybe you take one loss. Or maybe not. Maybe you're going to come for two wins and go home. I made you drive all this way. You know what I'm saying? But I like to give people opportunity. But I'm doing this all-day thing, all-day taping. Everything's taped. We taped eight to nine weeks of, of YouTube show, all our shows. And there was, like, a couple guys there that were just like – because. I, of course, I had a mini plan of like who's going to get booked and or what matches I, I want to see happen, what storylines I want to see through. And then there was a couple of stragglers that would just come up to me and be like, hey, am I booked? Am I doing another match? Am I doing another match? They'll come right out the ring after the match they just had. Am I going to be on another match? That would subconsciously make me write them on the on the paper. And there was a group of guys just stuck in the corner huddled that I didn't even notice until the end. And it's like Johnny always taught me one thing. He always taught me. Whoever's the promoter, whoever's running thing, whoever's the booker, whoever's got some kind of power, you always stand right next to them. No matter what, just stand next to them. See what they're talking, see what they need, see what they're doing, and just be a fly on the wall. Don't be annoying. Just be there. Always be accessible. Yeah. Never be afraid to ask a question. And I just feel like a lot of people just don't know how to do that right now. That's a good point. Like, that's something I haven't thought about too much either. It's like, I always kind of find myself to just like, like when I'm in certain locker rooms, I always end up finding my way around, like just at, I, I guess we call it right place, right time. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like, I just happen to be there when someone's like, Hey, oh, I need somebody. And I just, I'll be like, Oh, Hey, I, what, what you need? You know? Yeah. And it's, it's one thing, like, I remember like, even at this last show, even though it was at, so 
you know, spoilers for those who didn't know, I was at the one CW show uh, this last weekend and I, you know, and I, and people are going to be like last weekend, but we're not going to talk about when. So anyway, I was <laughs> at this one CW show and uh, I just, I, I, I knew I wasn't going to get booked on the show because originally I wasn't supposed to be there. And then I just, I, I brought up like all the guys of uh, pure ignorance and we all went up because the show that I was supposed to be on that night actually got moved to the next day. So I was like, yo, let me go ahead and just pop over say what's up and and i had plans like my daughter was supposed to come and just like hang out with me we were gonna go talk to other wrestlers and stuff like that she decided to stay home anyway long story short i just kind of hung around and told, told people like hey if uh you know if you guys need something let me know and i'd be glad to help out right and although like it never materialized like even like a couple the promoter and even uh that I guess you call it second in command. Anyway, the co-promoter was like, hey, sorry, we didn't have anything for you. I was like, even though you guys didn't have anything for me, like I still utilize what I had. Like because of because of that, we were able to create like Chaz and I had this idea, like creating like what we call uh, the three count quick cuts, which you guys will see on Friday, actually, because I'm going to drop this episode on Wednesday. So on Friday, uh, you're going to see the first epi episode. And uh, fun fact, it actually starts with Billy Starks. And because I was able to sit in the back and utilize those uh, those quick connections and ask and network and just talk to people, like other things became something. So, and that's why I think like, even if you're not booked on a show, make yourself available because you never know what's gonna happen at the drop of a dime. Yeah, exactly, man. And it's like I, some workers that are, they got a couple years, they don't want to show up to shows that they're not booked on. I get it, I get it. But sometimes just show up, man. You never know. Like something simple as that. Way, the fact that the promoter, co-promoter, went up to you and was like, "Sorry, we didn't have anything for you." That's huge. That's huge on this scene. You know how rare bookings are right now. And right now, it seems like so. Like last year, it seems like everybody was just throwing spaghettis on the wall. It seems like they were pulling in everybody, booking everybody. Everybody was getting a shot. And this year, it seems like all these promotions are pretty set with their talent. So, like, if you didn't get in last year, the year before, it's going to be tough to get into these promotions. So, it's, it's tough to get in anywhere. But, like, right now in this time period where all these booming – right now, I, I don't care what anyone says. This is the greatest the independence has ever been in terms of just, like, foundation being laid because you know something special is about to happen. I'll say give it a year, and the independence scene is going to be like, holy crap, this was amazing. But it's hard to get into places. So, when a promoter goes – Thanks for coming. Sorry we didn't have anything. That's him subconsciously telling himself, I'm going to use you next time. I have to use you next time. Yeah, and I even, I even like, and I, and you know, the one thing I feel like a lot of people forget to do is like, it just like send a, a message back to the promoter and just say thanks, right? Like, thanks for the opportunity because that also goes through huge. I know, like, for me, like, I've had a couple of promoters hit me back and be like, hey, actually, what are you doing this day? And I'm like, uh, you know, and I may be booked, I may not be, you know, but it's, it's that, it's those little things that like go like the extra mile to like really drive points like across with people. Like, I feel like that's just like a big miss on a lot of people. Even like, I, I don't know, it's weird because like I go through and I, I mentioned that to a couple people and they're just kind of looking at me like, oh, I would never thought about doing that. I'm like, why, why not? <laughs> And like I said, like a lot of this stuff is common sense. It's like stuff that you should be doing. And I, I get it. Like guys like us, we're in the grind. We're grinding out. for. We're going to be grinding out the next five years to get signed. All of us are going to be doing it. So it's like when you're in the grind, you kind of get lost in that whole like, am I making enough noise? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? And sometimes you're not just going to make one big set of noise. You have to make a bunch of like little sounds all over the place. And, and then it'll, it'll blow up for you. But we're all lost in our own translation that we don't get to use our common sense and just go, hey, thank you. That yeah. has gone so far for me. Like, it, it's taken me so far being on the independence for the two years that I've been on it. It's taken me so far. Just reaching out and being like, hey, thank you. You always get that message. Hey, all right, so here's the next date. Are you available? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm available. Whatever you need, man, I'll be there. <laughs> So one question I love asking, because this is this is now entering tool one. I kind of think of like this like a college course where we get to like dive in. But let's say like let's say we never met, right? And the first time we're gonna touch gloves, right? And you know, you ask me the question like, hey, how long have you been in? And I come to you and I'm like, yo, I've been in for like three years. 
Like, what are the, the details that you're looking for, or the things that you're looking for, the expectations that you may have for someone who's been in just under, like, under that five-year mark? Yeah, that's, that's, I, I love that question, because, like, it makes me think so much. Like, and it's always just what goes through the thought process of a wrestler, and we kind of don't put that thought process out there. So a lot of times, man, like, if I know I'm going to – so, like, even doing the IWA tapings, I locked up with so many people. I wrestled so many people. Some guys in it for two years, one year, eight years. It was so many people. But the one thing I always you always tell from a, a good worker is one, the lockup. You gotta have a decent lockup. Your lockup is gonna tell me how you work. Your lockup is gonna tell me if you're stiff, you can't move. I want that lockup to be nice and loose. And just like, of course, in the ring, loosey goosey and listen. That's one of the biggest things. So, like, I'm a Johnny's guy, so I'm very like old school talk. So one of the things about me is I don't call my matches. I hate calling my matches. I'll do it, especially if it's a big match and I have to go over some spots and I wanted to make sure it's great, but I'm not going to hit it A, B, C, D, you know, like these are bullet points. If you get lost, hey, brother, hit me up. We'll go to this spot. You know what I'm saying? If you forget it, we scrape it. We don't have to go through all of it, but I like to just call it in the ring. And if we got five minutes to go, if we're on AEW and we're doing dark or we're in WWE and we're doing extra work, we got four minutes. Chances are we're not going to go over a match. Chances are the, the person leading us is going to be like, just listen to everything I tell you out there, kid. We hear it all the time, all the time. And if you don't practice that, you're going to be in a mindset of just like, holy shit. So I, I like to gauge people and be like, we're going to call everything in the rain. Don't worry about it. I'll go over the finish with you a couple minutes before the match. They do one of these. <laughs> it's like, all right, I know what I'm in for. I know I'm going to be in for a ride. But in the ring, just be loose, listen, and loose is, like, the biggest one, and go slow. If you think you're going slow, go slower. Like, that's so huge, man. Like, always always be me. I'm a bigger guy. My PJ character, the savage guy, like, in the ring when I'm wrestling, there's moments where it's, like, I show power. And I, sometimes I show power by powering out of moves or getting up a little quicker those are things that I do that that's a character. But if I'm in WWE and I'm going through emotions and I have no character, I'm doing extra work. I can't do that. So I have to be subconscious and be like, I got to sell this. Because there was a couple people that watched me for the first time, even at Invictus. And it was like, you didn't sell that spine buster. And it was like, if you've watched me work at Invictus, you see those are one of the moves that I always power up on. It's a spot I call power up. But I look at it also from a person that's just watching me for the first time. And it's like, I don't get that. So that's something I need to take into consideration and take advice and listening. These are all traits that you want to see somebody that's three years in. And one of the biggest pieces of advice I could give to people that's three years in, that's such a hard number. Because when you first start training, you want to get from point A to point B in your first year. So when you hit year three, you're like, I'm nothing. I'm a blip on the radar. I'm not doing what I need to be doing. I need to change it up. No, you need to keep grinding. There's so it was funny too, because uh this past weekend I had pulled out a booking. It was my wife's birthday. Um, my son, I took my son to go see Cody Rhodes. So it was just like I'm not doing anything this weekend. But one of the guys was telling me it was just like some people don't even understand that concept. I don't get it. You always have to just know what it is that you're going to do. And if it's somebody's first time seeing you, know that everywhere, even if it's somewhere you've been a hundred times over. And it's one of the things that stuck with me. And I remember Sami Zayn even said it. It was like, if you've been, they, they love when he was ring, with Ring of Honor and he went from town to town to town. It was the first time through a curtain, a lot of those nights. And a lot of those nights, it was his 20th time through a curtain and everybody knew who he was. But don't treat it like that. Do not treat it like that. Do not. If it's your, your one, year, two, three years in, you could be three years in and you're not going to get that reaction everywhere you go. Three years, that's the, the, the hard number. It was a hard number for me. I know it could have been for you. It's a hard number for everybody. Three years, there's so much you have to take in, but you're not going to be a WWE superstar in three years. The, and the other, other thing the guy told me this weekend was seven years is that sweet spot number. 
that's when a lot of people in WWE and higher ups, they expect people to know what they're doing once they hit that seven year mark. And if you see it, a lot of guys that get signed, they get called up or they get tryouts seven years in. Seven years in. Like, and that's a young boy. That's a young boy. And it's like, even if you're an older guy, if you're 29, you're 30, it was, it was this really talented guy when I was at Gleason's. And he pulled out, man. He pulled out. He was 29. He was like, that's it. I'm giving it up. He was 20. I think he started when he was 21. Eight, nine years. That's a long time. But don't put numbers. Don't associate your age with what you're doing. Look at DDP. 36 years old. Got signed. Yeah. Damien Priest. Damien Priest was damn near 37. Then near 37 was Ring of with Ring of Honor killing it. He was 35. My man Damian Priest went from being an overweight indie guy, getting in shape, and finally getting his shot. And he was in his 30s, late 30s. That man Damian Priest don't look 37 right now. But I just saw him yeah. all bro. It's like he, he looks like he's 28, 29. Just chill, bro. Take it slow. Go slow. Go slow in the ring and go slow with your progress. Take it slow. Everybody wants to make the noise, make the noise, make the noise. Relax. It's yeah. it's funny because like I was just in a match actually on Sunday and uh like the the match was gonna have a hot start to it, right? So we get out, bam, I get blipped in the back, we start selling, I start selling, we start working my hand. It it's the way it works, right? And then I get into the ring and the first first move that I get to hit goes off kind of smooth. I don't wanna say it went off super smooth, because the guy instead of rolling through on a small package he spiked himself by accident <laughs> so that happened but then like we got up and things kind of got discombobulated and and we were working so fast that it, it was just like going all over the place so finally and this kind of is testament to me about this kind of thing so anyway we i was trying to figure out how we're going to get back to the spot that we need to get back to so i was like hey whip me off throw throw the clothesline i'll you know or i'll throw the clothesline i'll come off the rope well, do see though, you come in, I'll hit you hit me with the kick and I'll go down and then from the senton, that's where we'll go. So that's exactly what ended up happening was we kind of got lost. I went to throw the clothesline, he ducked, we hit the do see though, I came back through, bam, I took the took the the Larry to the uh leg Larry to the chest and bumped. I saw the senton, senton. He goes to the pin and I was like, work my hand and I, I kick out and I wait and then sure enough, here he comes, stomps and then works the rest hold and I was like Let's go. just breathe. Let's yeah. figure this out. We're right. And from that point on, like the crowd really got back into the match because like at first we were just kind of like we were there and then things got messed up. And you could see like both of our faces. We were trying to figure out how we were going to get back to the spot we needed yeah. to get to. And then it happened. And we were like, all right, we're here. Let's work the rest of the match out. And we did. And, you know, the crowd bought back in. They were they're were really like coming for me because I, you know, I was the face there. And yeah. Yeah, and then that that thing, took time. Guys, they, they, if the crowd's quiet, you'll get them. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry about that. One of the things that a lot of people need to just implement that really helped me in my game was, like, when you get lost or you don't know what to do, you sell to the hard cam. And if you don't know where hard cam's at, just look for a camera and get a cool picture. Like, just work it, slow it down. Find hard cam, and that's one of the things too. Like three years in, I've met more green than I've met experienced guys that are three years in. Um, and that's not a bad thing. Like three years in, it's not you're not supposed to be some superstar, you know what I'm saying? There's guys that look like a million bucks, there's guys that are getting great bookings because of how they look, and they're one year or two years in. Guys don't know how to work a camera, guys don't know how to sell, sell to a camera. Slow it down, and you'll find your speed. And and that, man, if you're three years in and you're doing that, you're on the right track. If you're three years in and you're just finding that camera, you're working towards the camera, there's two different things, man. There's indie wrestling, and indie wrestling, of course, you cater to the crowd. You find the hot spot of the crowd. You try to get them involved. So you even do that with the low part of the crowd. But we all want to be on TV. There's no denying that. Red Dog wants to be on TV. I want to be on TV. You know, pure ignorance wants to be on TV. Everybody wants to be on TV. We want to get, we want to be able to support our family. And the only way we're going to do that is by working a camera. Finding that camera. Oh, uh, sell that. Sell everything. Sell straight to the camera. Find a camera and sell. 
Don't just go, yo, brother, you think I grabbed my back the right way? No, because you was looking at the floor. I wrestled this one guy. <laughs> he was pretty decent, and he was selling like, oh, my God, he was selling so great. But he had all this hair, and every time he sold, he had his head down, and the hair was covering his face. And it was like, yeah, you had great body selling. But the crowd has – if you're selling and I'm a heel and you're a baby and you try, at your job at that moment is to get sympathy. It's always the case for a baby face that's getting his ass with. If the crowd can't read that you're physically in pain from your facial expressions, that's why Kane took off the mask. Elevate your whole game to a whole nother level because you can connect with the crowd in a different way now. Use your facials. Always pick up your hair. Always go straight to the thing. Slow down. Find a camera and sell. <laughs> that's, that's it, man. That's it. You do that, we're going to have a banger. Like <laughs> That's what you- – I'm going to make sure, like, I, I write down, like, a lot of things in my notebook, and I don't know if I have that in my notebook. I'm definitely having to go look. And if even if it is in there, rewrite it in there, because that is definitely a good point to let's just find a camera and just sell. Like, and I, that's such a good idea. Because, like, and that was the thing, like, and these are, like, these are, like, tidbits that, like, I'm starting to pick up and, like, put together and, like, really, like, ex- like really try to utilize. Because one of my favorite things to do is like even when I'm like a baby face or even when I was like heel, the first thing I like to do is come through the curtain. I might say something for the crowd, right? Like if I'm a baby face, like yeah. let's go, right? The you know indie thing. And then if right I'm like the heel, we all done it. We all do it. Yeah. And then if I'm on the heel side, it's obvious. Like, hey yo, where the hell am I? And yeah. then I look for the I look for the roaming camera, and then I just look at the camera, and I'm just say something to the camera. Yeah. Like, and one of the easiest things, so when I first started hitting the scene two years ago, I was a heel because I'm a bigger guy. I'm, I'm six foot. I'm 200, almost 280 pounds. I'm a big guy. They all go, that's a heel. And uh, so I always put the heat on. And one of the things I learned, it's an old Johnny Raj trick. When you're putting heat, always put heat and move the ring. So the baby face has to work the ring. If I hit you in one corner, Red Dog, if you're the face, find the next one. Just move away from me. Don't stand there. Don't stand in the corner and take a couple shots. Keep moving. Hit the middle of the rope. Stay there. Let me hit you again. Boom. We keep it moving. But everything's going towards the camera. So always, before the show starts, you ask the camera guy, hey, what cam- uh, where are you going to be staying at? Oh, that corner? I'm going to keep working towards you. Okay. Hard cam is over there. So all my action stuff, like I'm not going to hit a drop kick like this if my camera is right in front of me. I got to hit the drop kick like this. You know what I'm saying? Has to look nice. Like I, I just did that, uh, the last episode of Intensity, and you, I went right back to that. I was like, Nah, I'm gonna hit this drop kick again. I went from diagonal. I was like, Damn, I messed up. Can't see my vertical shit. And then I hit it. But it was like those little tidbits, and that's why I like doing what I'm doing with IWA on the YouTube show, where it's, it's time. It's 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 time for us to get some reps in front of a camera. You're not playing to a crowd. You're going to work. You're going to learn how to work better and work that camera because at the end of the day, there's no crowd there. It's just the boys there making noise. So it's just time to have fun, but take it serious. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm starting another thing called uh, Chosen Pro Wrestling. Um, This starts March 25th. It's the free-for-all. It's called the free-for-all. Tom's River, New Jersey. Any level of experience, it's a tryout. But there's over 10 different companies that are going to be at this tryout. Um, They're all scouting for talent, and the company that I'm starting called Chosen Pro Wrestling is we're picking our roster, like straight out of this tryout. We're picking a 40-man roster right out of the tryout. Um, And one of the things I want with this tryout, I want it to be like the NXT for the Northeast Indies, where it's like if you see a guy here, then you're going to see a guy somewhere else. But it's all about just getting opportunities of working over and over and over again. Like, I know we're chosen. We have, like, six dates already. Um, No, five dates. There might be a sixth. And who knows what we're going to do with that. And then we're doing the IWA with the YouTube show and everything that's going on there. I just want, I want, I want to be able to help guys like Red Dog. I want to be able to help guys like me. I want to be able to help pure ignorance get shots up here that they wouldn't normally get. Because I'm not a politicking guy. I'm not just going to do friends. I'm gonna. If you're talented, I'm actually going to look at the promos you send in. I'm actually going to give you feedback. This is one guy that's like, I want to be a heel manager. And it's like, send me some stuff. You send me it, I'll look at it. I looked at it. I hit him back up and was like, you got to work on this. You got to work on that. 
still come to the tryout. Let's get this done. Let's work. But that I feel like there's not a lot of opportunity on the scene, even hmm. though there should be. Like there should be a lot more opportunities for a red dog at Invictus. But because they're locked up with their 30 man roster, there's not that many doors that can open. So if I just start up another ind- independent promotion that's going to be set with their 30 to 40 man roster, I'm just diluting the scene. You know what I'm saying? But Chosen Pro Wrestling is going to be that promotion where you see a red dog. But now, next week, you might see Red Dog on Invictus. You might see Red Dog on Magic. You might see Red Dog on Win. Wrestling is now with the Maximos. You might see Red Dog on Titan. You might see Red Dog on so many other promotions that are working with Chosen just so people can get that experience. Like the commentary team is the promoter from Invictus Pro Wrestling, the promoter from We Are Wrestling, and Alfred, who a guy who's just everywhere, who can talk to everyone. So I want to make sure guys like Red Dog come through Chosen yeah, you could come to the first two dates. You might not see Red Dog at all six dates. But Red Dog's going to come to Chosen one show, and then next thing you know, you're going to see him getting chances on Invictus, on IWA, getting chances everywhere else that we we might see fit. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to create opportunity, create starting the escalator, so to speak, of just a funnel of talent that help us get notarized, get some eyes on us to help us out. I would love to go down certain places and get some reps in. But you need to have the opportunity. And right now, there's not a lot of opportunity down at places. I remember legit, I'm not going to say the promotion's name. Um, I saw him this weekend. And a couple people went up to him and was like, when are you going to put Savage on the show? He looked at me and was like, you know, you make enough noise, we get you on. And it was like, it was a smack in the face. It was like, well, damn. But he's right. You know, who am I big to? I'm big to the people that follow me. Yes, every show I made it. No, I made it. One of the things, and this is something that you should do. This is something that every worker should do. You want to make sure whenever you show up on a show, if your picture pops up on a poster, there's going to be 10 to 15 to 20 seconds that that already sound just because you're going. That's the effect I have right now. Right now I have the effect if my, my face pops up on a poster, 20 to 30 tickets might get sold. 15 to 30 might get sold because PJ Savage showed up. And now there's a little bit of a following that follows him. Now I need to get that to a hundred because I need to make sure the promote I saw this weekend, you know, Hey, Savage, can we get you? No, kiss my ass, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Over there. But know your worth. And even if someone shits on you and smacks you in the face with the white glove, there's some truth in that because obviously he doesn't know who I am. Obviously, he's not looking into my work. So, obviously, I'm not making enough noise to get to his his table. So, I need to make sure I'm hitting everybody's table. But, again, you're not going to do that in three years. You're not going to do – I've been on the Indies for two years. You know what I'm saying? I haven't gotten a chance to be at a bigger promotion yet. I haven't done MLW. I haven't done Ring of Honor. I haven't done Impact yet. I haven't done none of those bigger promotions. So, everybody's just like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? But you can't be discouraged. Please keep going. Everybody, just keep going. Keep trucking. Because I know workers watch this shit. So just keep going, bro. Like, don't stop. Do not. No, I like that a lot, too. Because it's one of those things where it's like when you look at certain people who like to talk and stuff like that, or, you know, they they start to get discouraged because they, you know, and and I could be honest, right? Because I I, I was going through that just this last week, right? I was like, the question was, like, you know, so many people, and, and this also goes back into networking, too, right? Like, so many people get to know who you are, and you're like, yo, what? But what am I missing, right? Like, what is it that I'm missing that you're not wanting to utilize me on your show? And it took it took my homeboy, I know the other half of this podcast, legitimately goes, dude, you're not missing anything. He's like, if they don't want to use you, fuck him and move on. Like, just go find somewhere else. And then they'll come back to you once you start kind of like erupting a little bit outside of their territory. And I was like, you know, you're fucking right. I was like, I'm over here being pissed off about because a couple places don't want to utilize me. I'm like, yo, but he's right. I was like, if they don't want to use me, it's cool, man. I can go somewhere else, get my get my following going, get my name out there, and I'll be at a different place. And I'll be like, hey, yo, what's up? <laughs> like, I'm they're going to keep... hit you up. You're not going to hit yeah. them. They're going to hit you up. That's the grind. That's the grind we're in. Like, I promise you, every book that I have this year, they hit me up. 
this bus so many times you get booked out of trying to reach out and i am reaching out to people i, I reach out to hundreds of people I've, I've reached out to the promoter from one cw he doesn't want to use me yet. he doesn't want to use me yet but hey look i'm in your dms bro if you ever need me i'm here and I do that everywhere because I just want to be everywhere. I want to be one of the greatest to ever do it. And I know I need the reps and I know I need to get everywhere. And I like what you said where it's like, you know, you just, you're not missing anything. You are who you are. But one of the things that I learned also on my side of it, I, I got the promo. I got the in-ring ability. I have a look, but I might not look like I have the body. You know, I got a big old belly. You know, I'm a big little sloppy dude sometimes. Know your weaknesses. Know where you are weak and work on it. Like, we, like I can't deny myself. I have to get on a workout regimen. I have to lose the stomach. I have to, you know, get in shape if I want to get the WWE. That's no secret, bro. You know what I'm saying? I had someone go, uh, I had posted up the video about Co- my son. He's just like this big Cody fan. And uh, it did Cody's entrance. It was the cutest thing. And Cody put it on his page. Awesome moment. One of the wrestlers that I know, he came on my page and was like, cool stuff. But that could be you. You just got to lose the T-shirt. Because I wear a cut-off T-shirt. And part of me could go, well, damn, everyone wears a cut-up T-shirt now. Why can I? You know what I'm saying? Kevin Owens does it. Bray Wyatt does it. Damn Mav does it. All these guys do it. All these guys wear T-shirts, cover up their big-ass bellies because they got nice arms. Why can't I do it? But you know he's right. The level that I want to reach, I want to be one of the greatest. I can't. When you was a kid, did you like the guy with the T-shirt? No. You know what I'm saying? You like the guy that ripped off his T-shirt. That's that's the thing. You like the guy who walked down with the vest and had no shirt underneath. You like the rock who had the set of shirts but never buttoned them up. Shawn Michaels, it's like all these guys, we have to look the part. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror and go, is this a toy I want to buy? Or do I look like an indie guy? And do not get discouraged by that. Do not. I tried the new look with gear, didn't like it too much, but I'm going to keep trying different looks, and I need to get in shape. Do not be afraid of your weaknesses. That's what's going to take us to the next level. Where am I messed up at? Let me fix it. Let me work on it. And then you're going to get to a point where you're going to look like Cody Rhodes and you're going to talk better than Cody and you're going to wrestle better than Cody and they're still not going to want you. <laughs> and you're going to say, Damn, what do I got to do now? Keep grinding, brother. Just keep grinding. But do not look away from your flaws like me. Like I'm I'm owning my flaws. I'm, I'm, I know I'm the overshaped wrestler, that, but everything I do looks and it's hard. But put the hell with it. I'm going to get in shape, and I'm going to keep trucking, keep going, and become a success story. If that's what you guys want, the powers that be, you want me to get in shape, I got you. But, damn, look at what we could do. There's some of us that can offer something to the table. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys that could talk, a lot of guys that could go in the ring, and you could use them. And it, it, there's something that I would touch upon when I make it, when I'm on contract, when I'm 50 – 55 and I'm sitting in the gym or I'm running something, then I'll touch upon it. But there's that little part of it where promoters and wrestlers, promoters are ruining the game. They're ruining the game. It's You have some promoters, not all, that think they know what they're doing. They don't. They have not a clue. There's some promoters that, yeah, you were a wrestler before, but you think you know how to make it when you never made it and you're implementing all these things instead of letting wrestlers be wrestlers, let wrestlers be wrestlers. Now, if you're someone who just had money and started a promotion, damn, it even made me scratch my head. You saw that, right? Like it was like, (laughs) bro, it's like you can't dictate the scene. And right now, right now, shit, I might get heat for this, but right now promoters run the scene. We're the content. We're what people come to see. No disrespect to the promoters. I love all of them. Most of them. Not all of them. I'm lying. (laughs) Some of them are smart. Some of them know how to work with talent. Some of them know how to let talent be talent. But 
don't forget the wrestler, the guy who put eight years of training in, the guy who put three, four years of bumping with no pay, the guy who's like just in the grind. Do not belittle him. Do not make wrestlers feel insignificant. That's the part that bothers me, where it's like, okay, yeah, we get it. You got your 40-man roster. Not too many other guys can get in. But don't go ahead and laugh with the boys and be like, why is this piece of crap here? Don't do that, because why are you here? You're here because you got lucky and made some money, and you think you can tell wrestlers what to do. Wrestlers, we are the scene. And as much as promoters might hate me saying this right now, take it back, please. Let's take the scene back. It's ours anyway. We're the wrestlers. We're the guys. And I'm not saying go out, start your promotions, and not, not have any yeah. be a part of it. As much as people would love that, no, it's never going to happen. We're always going to have promoters. But I would love for promoters to be in sync with wrestlers more and, and understand how to let us work and be products and push wrestlers, not just push who you want to push. Not just go, oh, I like this guy. I like how he wrestles. And I want to tell other people I got him as my heavyweight champion. And then all of a sudden, your product sucks and you're drawing 30 people. And you're like, nah, I'm doing great. I'm not letting no one in. Brother, come on. <laughs> come on. We want to see the city thrive. Like, IWA is coming up on their fifth year anniversary. Titan Championship Wrestling is coming up on their third year. Invictus is on their third year. So many of these promotions coming out of the pandemic is doing stuff and making waves, but all of them that I know I work with are smart, man. They know how to work with their talent. They know how to let PJ Savage be PJ Savage. They're not bringing PJ Savage and turning him into an Indian. You know what I'm saying? It's like work with the rest, especially on the indie level, man. When you're paying me a thousand bucks, man, and do a thousand a show, and we're on a GCW or we're on MLW and the WWE, yeah, I got to listen to Vince. You know what I'm saying? But we're on the indie scene. Let's work in cohesive. Not you're not you're not my boss. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're giving me what half of the guys out here is getting what 40, 50 buck envelopes. If that, if that, bro, like come on. You're not and then maybe some guy who travels. I've been very lucky enough to get three digits. There's been guys that are lucky enough to get that, to get 200 bucks a book in. That's 200 bucks, bro. By the time we get back on the flight, by the time we take all those tolls, we're coming home with 40, 60 bucks. You didn't pay my rent. You didn't sign my check. There is no check here. You're evading the tax just like I am, brother. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So long story short, I'm sorry for rambling. I just, I just, I just want there to be a cohesiveness, and I want wrestlers to take back this thing. Yeah, no, I feel you on that, and that's, that's the one thing I love about like the indie scene. And uh, anybody can say what they want to say, but I like, you know, I'm a lot like Randy Moss, straight cash, homie. That's all it is. Yeah, bro. That's good, <laughs> but, man. yo, uh, no, but what I do want to do is I kind of want to move this over to like our, we always have like those games, obviously, on now entering 101. We have obviously the 10 count questions. And this one, though, we do have one. It's called Pin Submit DQ. And uh, here's how it works I'm going to fire off. Three rounds, three different type of personnel, right? And you got pin one, submit one, DQ one. Okay. So we'll start this off with maybe a familiar roster, right? So we can start this off with, uh, let's go, Big Trouble Ben Bishop. We can go with uh, Chris Bojo, right? You know, Man Crush. And uh, last but not least, we'll go with Diego El Trabajador. Trabajador. Uh, I'll go with Pin Ben Bishop just because we got that big main event coming up, and that's exactly what I want to do. Um, I'll probably submit Mojo just because who likes Mojo, you know? And uh, <laughs> and I'll DQ Trabajo just because I like him. I'll probably just kick him in the nuts once. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I won't kill you tonight, brother. Go home. It's because sometimes, you know, he likes to put in all the work. And when he puts in the work... Like, you got to repay him with a favorable finish. <laughs> uh, no, I can't believe that man painted some wrestling shoes that look like some Timberlands, man. That was one of the best things I've ever seen. Yeah, I when I got to work him at a, at, at a Let Them Fight, bro, I was like, 
we were kicking back and forth like ideas and I was like, everything was just working so perfect. I was like, this is so much fun. I was like, I want to do this every single time. But it was also something that I learned. I, I, I want to share this because this was major. So I love cutting promos. Anybody who follows this show yes. knows that I have Bang ridiculous ideas. <laughs> ridiculous Bang ideas. Entertaining. I appreciate it. But Diego kicked one back and I was like, oh, going forward, I have to step my whole entire game up because not only am I, he's not only am I like doing like a fun promo, this man is like doing great promos too. And I was like, I know a lot of other wrestlers who are doing this. And I was like, I'm going to like, I'm going to keep pushing to like do more better and like just keep man, reaching. Cause I was like, yo, it's lit. <laughs> that man makes movies. That man makes movies, man. And like everybody needs to step their promo game up. Uh, everybody does. I'm tired of cell phone promos. You know, just step it up, man. And please, everybody, for the love of God, stop cutting your promos like this. Yes. <laughs> landscape, brother, landscape, please. Just All you got to do is flip your phone like this. It's going to work. Even the selfie ones look nice. Just, just landscape them. But the promo game on the, El Trabajo is one hell of a promo game. You two, you're one of the guys. You guys make movies out here. I'm stepping my, my promo game up. I'm always known for my promos. Uh, I'm even trying to elevate them. I got one dropping for Anthony Gangone. He knows some some heat's coming. He, some heat's coming the way he knows it. He hates how quiet it is right now. He even put out a promo going, I'm going to throw out the first shot. I'm waiting to hear what you're going to say. Like, when a man cuts a promo saying, I'm waiting to hear what you're going to say, you got him. Everybody knows they expect expecting some heat, but wait till <laughs> what you see there, man. Promo games <laughs> is crazy out here. Yeah. So we're going to move on to the next round, right? And uh, I want to take a battle of the big men, right? So this one is going to be Hulk. Thing and Juggernaut. Oh, oh man! I want to submit Hulk just to say I made Hulk tap out. Ooh, come on, <laughs> come on! I might have to th- DQ thing because, like, well, what do you do there? And then everybody wants to pin the Juggernaut. Like, you pin the Juggernaut. You know what? What else can stop you? But, but yeah. thing, I don't even know how to beat him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You can't even kick him in the nuts. Like yeah, I'm gonna have to hit the referee on that one. Yeah, just try to <laughs> you know. get out of there. All right, so let's go with uh, our last round, which is actually one of my favorites. So we're gonna go with uh, Jake Cole, Kendrick Lamar, and last but not least, Fifty Cent. Oh, that's fire! That's fire! That's fire! I'm a DQ Kendrick. Just because I don't really listen too much Kendrick. I'm not, I'm not really a Kendrick guy. Fire, though. Fire. Or mad respect. Like, I heard his last album. It was fire. Uh, J. Cole. That man, fire, bro. I'm a J. Cole kind of guy. I might, have, I might have to submit J. Cole. Put him in a sharpshooter. That man, fire. <laughs> and I got pin 50, bro. He's one of the greatest out here. But a New York guy. New York guy. <laughs> being, you know, I rock my Tims, the Sirens, and under the New York street lights. Pin and 50 be fire, you know what I'm saying? That's one hell of a <laughs> crap right there. I'm telling you, brother, I'm pin 50. What you gonna do about that? I'll pin two quarters. What you gonna do? Like, you can't get better than that. That's the promo yeah. right there. Yeah, I'm definitely pin 50. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, those are the rounds of pin submit DQ. So, the last thing I need for you to do once again to let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Everything at PJ Savage underscore Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, hit me up, man. Uh, please, please, please. If you're a worker and you're watching this, hit up the Chosen Pro Wrestling tryout, the free for all March 25th, Times River, New Jersey. It's a five dollar tryout. It's not a money grab. Crazy opportunity for the New York and New Jersey scene. It's it's as crazy as it is now. It's going to be hard to get into the scene. I'm trying to provide some opportunity. This is probably your only way in. Um, yeah, check out my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is like. My thing right now, you're going to catch matches there. You're going to catch my weekly VOG there, Savage Season. Go check that out. You're going to see me, whether I'm on the road at a Wawa or I'm taking my kids to Billy B's. Like, I'm just – it's so much. So you get to really see the person and who I am on Savage Season. And, um, yeah, just go check out my YouTube channel. Go subscribe and just enjoy the journey, man. We're on the grind together. 
when there you have it. So he gave you all his handles once again. He told you where you can find him. He even gave you where you can actually go try out for Chosen Pro Wrestling. And uh, you know what that means? It's just like everybody's favorite part of a wrestling match. We got to take this home. Because this is the Three Count Presents. Now we're into ring 201. And I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog. Learn the man that leads you up that mountain called wrestling. But like every good Sherpa, which I know I am now because this is season two and with now into ring being at season three actually season four episodes like 300 and something right i know but it's never about me it's about who's into ring so who's into the ring you see the man right there pj savage himself so you guys know what to do tune into the next episode and be there or you're really just following us on all, all of our social media platforms you're even subscribed to our youtube channel you're following us on spotify you're leaving us five star frog flash reviews on apple Podcasts. You're buying our merch, our merch on foryourwear.com, and you're even telling us like how great we're doing with all your friends, leaving those comments and doing all that fun stuff. Or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to end, you know, waiting for the outro, and then choosing another episode to listen to. There you go. Kawaii. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to Twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the three count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the three count pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to YouTube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at prowrestlingtees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.